In a snow-covered place, a taxi is cruising along with a young boy as its passenger. He glances at his phone and reads a message from his father, stating that he can't pick him up. Unfazed by this, the boy feels he arrived too early anyway. The taxi carrying the young boy has already passed the city of Kidami. Deciding that his destination is close enough, he opts to stop in the city. He disembarks and the taxi promptly departs, leaving him alone. He is impressed that in such a vast place, there are neither people nor cars in sight. Taking a breath, he is startled by the extreme cold of Hokkaido's snowy season, feeling somewhat disappointed with the situation. As he walks, he contemplates that moving to this place might have been a wrong decision. He checks his phone for directions, but worry sets in as his phone battery is nearly depleted. Looking ahead, he notices a girl his age who appears strikingly beautiful, leaving a lasting impression on him. Observing her, he is surprised to see that she is showing her thighs and not wearing a jacket in the cold weather. The girl notices the boy and, inquiring about the way to his destination, he admires her. Cute red nose and ears. After she guides him, he thanks her and quickly departs, relieved that he didn't get captivated by her beauty. However, the girl stops him, expressing confusion as he plans to walk to a destination. That would take about three hours, given Katami's vast size. Disappointed with his choice of getting off the taxi at the wrong spot, he considers taking another taxi, but it turns out there are none passing through. Wanting to call a taxi, he discovers he would have to wait for 30 minutes. The girl suggests waiting for the bus together, as it only takes five minutes for a bus that passes by his destination. Grateful, the boy agrees to her proposal and thanks her for the assistance. Feeling embarrassed, the girl asks about the boy's hometown, learning that he is from Tokyo. Surprised by this revelation, she didn't expect someone from Tokyo to come to such a remote place. Upon knowing that the boy came for family matters, she assumes he is unfamiliar with Kitami and might see her as a country girl. The boy denies this, expressing his fondness for the quiet town. Despite being teased as a country bumpkin in Tokyo, he feels relieved to have left that city behind. After realizing that the boy seemed friendly, the girl asked about the boy's age. She was surprised and hugged the boy's arm upon learning that they were both 16 years old. Inquiring further about their schools, they discovered that they both attended senior high school Hokurio. She continued to hold the boy's arm, making him slightly uncomfortable. Despite noticing that the girl was cold, the boy didn't mind. However, he felt bothered as the girl's chest bumped into his arm. He was still puzzled because the girl wasn't wearing gloves. Suddenly, the girl sneezed and mucus came out of her nose. The boy was surprised and quickly grabbed tissues for her. He didn't expect to be talking to such a kind Hakuto girl. Just in his thoughts, he didn't realize that the girl playfully tricked him with the very cold snow. The girl laughed at the boy jumping from the cold snow inside his clothes, causing her to laugh until tears came out. The boy looked at the girl's beautiful face with tears streaming down, captivated by her. Feeling annoyed, the girl pinched the boy's arm. Blushing, she suddenly excused herself as the bus they were waiting for finally arrived. Curious, the boy asked for the girl's name. After learning that she was Fuyuki Minami, he anticipated their next meeting. As she boarded the bus, leaving the relieved boy behind, he was ecstatic about his trip to Hakuto. Reading a message from his father, he realized he missed the bus he had been waiting for. Inside the bus, Minami hoped to be in the same class as the boy. The school bell rang at senior high school Hokurio. The boy entered class four and introduced himself as Shiki Tsubasa to the students. After a pause from the classmates, the teacher instructed Tsubasa to sit in the back corner. While the teacher was taking attendance, Tsubasa, who was looking for Minami, felt a bit disappointed not to find her. However, he quickly changed his mind, realizing he was just surprised by Minami's beauty. Suddenly, Minami entered through the door next to Tsubasa. Both were surprised to meet again. While the teacher scolded Minami for being late, Minami and Tsubasa never expected to 
be in the same class. During the break, they started talking. Minami greeted and called Tsubasa's name with a cute face, surprising Tsubasa. Tsubasa didn't expect Minami to call him by his first name, and he returned Minami's. Greeting. Classes have resumed, but Tsubasa feels very cold. Seeing some students wearing jackets and blankets, he feels envious. Suddenly, Minami offers a blanket because she always brings two, knowing she easily gets cold. She doesn't mind if Tsubasa uses the blanket for the entire day. When wearing the blanket, Tsubasa feels incredibly comfortable due to the warmth and Minami's scent. He imagines Minami hugging him, and he's very surprised by the thought. After the lesson, a male student greets and leaves Minami. Tsubasa approaches Minami, gives her back the blanket, and expresses gratitude for her. Help! Seeing Minami sniffing the blanket, Tsubasa intends to wash it first, but Minami refuses, stating that Tsubasa's scent mixed with hers is pleasant. She then asked for compensation from Tsubasa for her help. They head home together, with Minami again hugging Tsubasa's arm. Despite only meeting for two days, Minami feels very close to Tsubasa. She asks Tsubasa to escort her to the station as she needs to take the train. Minami inquires about Tsubasa's girlfriend, surprising him. Curious about Tokyo's dating spots, Minami is amazed by Tsubasa's answer. Feeling jealous of the numerous entertainment options in Tokyo? Due to the longer winter season in Kidami, everyone can only play indoors, either at their own homes or others. Tsubasa is perplexed when considering if he should visit Minami's house. Upon reaching the station, Minami thanks Tsubasa. As Tsubasa is about to leave, Minami invites him to her house the next day, leaving Tsubasa. Very surprised, she wants to learn about Tokyo with Tsubasa on their day off. Tsubasa is confused at first, but eventually accepts the invitation. After exchanging contacts, the train to take Minami arrives. They bid farewell before parting ways. The next day, Tsubasa went to Minami's house. He felt worried because he had never been to a girl's house before. Pressing the doorbell, he was anxious about Minami's parents fighting out. However, he couldn't resist the strong temptation from Minami. Tsubasa spoke to the person inside through the intercom. Surprisingly, Minami answered and instructed Tsubasa to enter as the door was unlocked. Minami welcomed Tsubasa as he entered, urging him to come in quickly. While Tsubasa was taking off his shoes, Minami mentioned that he was fortunate since both her parents were out. Tsubasa was surprised, unable to imagine what would happen. They both entered the living room, stepping inside. Tsubasa felt warmth as there was a sizable floor heater in the room. Tsubasa realized Minami's earlier remark as they could use the warm living room when Minami's parents were away. Suddenly, Minami touched Tsubasa with her foot, startling him. She laughed at Tsubasa's funny scream, then stared at him, asking about their plans. Minami intended to fetch a drink for Tsubasa and offered him katsujin. Unlike Tsubasa, Minami had been drinking katsujin since childhood. Tsubasa tasted katsujin, finding it similar to yogurt. Suddenly, Minami screamed as she spilled the katsujin. She was about to pour. Katsujin spilled around Minami's chest, so she intended to change her clothes first. Tsubasa couldn't contain his surprise at seeing Minami's chest, trying to calm himself. Minami came out after changing into a somewhat revealing outfit. Tsubasa was confused as Minami suddenly wore an open outfit. She usually wears in front of him. Watching to change the topic, Tsubasa suggested watching a movie together. Minami agreed to Tsubasa's proposal and promptly prepared the film. As Minami crawled, Tsubasa was shocked to see Minami's buttocks. After preparing the film, Minami was puzzled as Tsubasa seemed strange. The movie contained explicit content, making Tsubasa uncomfortable. Suddenly, Tsubasa heard sounds from Minami resembling moans. He began to think about Minami's intentions, but suddenly, Minami touched him with her foot, disturbing him. Tsubasa decided to stop Minami. However, it turned out Minami was asleep, and the previous sounds were due to her upset stomach. Tsubasa was relieved, but he was confused as Minami could sleep with revealing clothes in front. 
of him. After the evening, Minami finally woke up from her sleep. Tsubasa got ready to leave after waiting for Minami, who eventually woke up. He left the previous movie kiss set at Minami's house. Minami noticed Tsubasa's jacket on her, and she promptly returned it to him. Tsubasa wore the jacket and bid farewell to Minami. Minami, who was silent, was surprised to realize that Tsubasa had already left her house. Tsubasa, walking alone, stopped when Minami caught up with him. Minami apologized for falling asleep and leaving Tsubasa alone. Concerned for Minami, Tsubasa draped his scarf around her, causing Minami to blush. Tsubasa was about to take off his jacket, but Minami stopped him, stating that the scarf already kept her warm. Seeing Tsubasa sneeze, Minami made up an excuse to go to Seiko Mart and treat Tsubasa. She looked very happy as she pulled Tsubasa's hand. In the final scene, Tsubasa was seen enjoying the food Minami had bought. They both ate the food together. Minami showed an onigiri that was the store's original. Tsubasa ate the onigiri, but there was a grain of rice stuck on his cheek. Minami observed Tsubasa's face, then took the rice stuck on his cheek and ate it, leaving Tsubasa unable to hide his surprise.